They are considered two of the best basketball players. Michael Jordan, Isaiah Thomas, anyone who knows NBA history understands that these two men changed the game in many ways during their time in the league. They were both dominant and influenced countless players who came after them. But did you know that Michael Jordan actually kind of hated Isaiah Thomas? I know hate's a strong word, but seriously, there's a lot of evidence to back that up. And I look forward to going into this beef for you. What's up, YouTube? Let's get it started. The truth is that Jordan and Thomas have been quietly battling with one another for more than three decades now. And this bitter feud started in the simplest of ways, actually. But no matter how minor the start of it was, it remains a full-blown war behind the scenes. You might think that the reason these two hold a grudge is because they were both such big stars in the league at the same time. In other words, they were opponents of the highest order. Jordan's Chicago Bulls and Thomas's bad boy Detroit Pistons would meet each other in the playoffs every single year from 1988 to 1991 and you know that will drive a divide between the two. Jordan and the Bulls came out on top over the Pistons in a clean sweep during the 91 Eastern Conference Finals, which was worthy of great praise. That shocking defeat led to an infamous moment when the Pistons actually walked off the court in the final seconds before the buzzer was sounded. That was bad form for sure, and it left a nasty taste in the mouths of many NBA fans who thought they looked like sore losers. But even though they lost in 91, Detroit took down Chicago three years in a row before that, so uh, this was a legitimate rivalry despite that. Look, there is no mistaking the fact that these two teams didn't like each other. Yes, Jordan and Thomas were the leaders of their teams, but all members of the squads were ready to go toe to toe with each other. Both sides of this fight butted heads often. You know, there is going to be some scrapping on the court when players like Dennis Rodman and Bill Lambeer are playing. I mean, they were called the bad boy Pistons for a reason, right? All NBA fans at the time knew that the Bulls and Pistons were often the most heated rivalry in the league. The truth is that a lot of people didn't really like Thomas at the time. The man is known for his wonderful and bright smile, but below the surface, make no mistake, the dude is an absolute dog on the court. Many people have said that Thomas was a dirty player at the time and that he would use some unsavory tactics against other players, which was true. From sicking his teammates on someone to talking a lot of smack to even throwing elbows and hitting too hard, Thomas wasn't the charming young man that he made himself out to be in the press, and Jordan knew that. Of course, Jordan was a trash talker himself. He could take it and give it at the same time. Jordan's competitive spirit has never been a secret. Even all these years later, people who played with and against Jordan have talked about just how devoted he was to the game and how he was not shy of sharing his opinions about other people. So what we had here were two team leaders intent on winning and not being afraid of getting into somebody else's face. That is a recipe for disaster if we've ever seen one. But Jordan's utter hatred for Thomas goes back a few years before that. So, I don't know, maybe you might think that Jordan and Thomas's beef started back when they were duking it out in the postseason, but it actually goes back even further than that, way back in 1985, and it involves the All-Star Game of all things that year. At that point, Thomas had been in the NBA for a few years. He had been drafted as the second overall pick in the 81 draft, and was already putting up double digits every single night after a few seasons. Then in 85, along came this rookie player named Michael Jordan. Right from the start, people considered Jordan to be the future of the sport. And you can understand why Thomas might have been a little jealous of the rising superstar. Thomas's grudge was probably a bit stronger for a big reason. Jordan was representing Chicago with the Bulls, and Thomas was a native of that city. Although he played for the Pistons in Detroit, Thomas still deeply loved his hometown and felt that he should be the hero of that city and not this young upstart who was actually from North Carolina. Remember, Thomas was a dirty player, so he was willing to do dirty things to get his way. He didn't want to share the stage with Jordan for a number of reasons. Jealousy, hometown pride, you name it. So he did what any powerful person would. He pulled some strings and made sure that Jordan got very little time in his first All-Star game. Many people were shocked to see Jordan completely frozen out of the All-Star game in 85. The rookie player from the Bulls scored only 7 points, hitting just 2 of 9 shots. That's right. Michael Jordan, who would later become the greatest basketball player of all time, at least according to a lot of people, only scored seven points in the All-Star game. And multiple people have said it's because Thomas made sure that Jordan was ignored on the floor. 
However, there are other reports that claim a few people playing in the game were peeved by Jordan's personality and his pushy attitude. But it sounds like Thomas was the ringleader, ensuring that Jordan was ignored as much as possible. And guess what? Jordan took that very personally. In fact, Jordan's first game after his disappointing All-Star appearance was against, well, you guessed it, Isaiah Thomas and the Bad Boy Pistons. And Jordan went wild, scoring 49 points, 15 rebounds, 5 assists, and 4 steals. It was one of his best performances to that point. If that doesn't sound like someone getting revenge, I don't know what does. Dr. Charles Tucker, who was an advisor to both Thomas and Magic Johnson actually at the time, only poured fuel on the fire when he said that Thomas did in fact deny Jordan the ball during his first All-Star game, kind of as a way to teach him a lesson and put him in his place. Curiously, Tucker would walk back those statements a few days later, denying that anyone was out to get Jordan. Some people have speculated that Tucker only tampered down on these comments because he was reprimanded by Thomas, who was unhappy with the public statement. Although the press at the time didn't really dig into the issue too much, they did ask Thomas about it. Was he the devilish mastermind behind this plot, like some had assumed? Well, to his credit, he said no. He said he had nothing to do with Jordan's limited output in the game, and he even mentioned how Moses Malone, an established superstar in his own right, only took 10 shots himself. It's hard to get a footing in the All-Star game, Thomas said, all with the characteristically charming smile. And, you know, he kind of has a point. Was that smile hiding his intentions, though? And was he actually being much more manipulative than he let on? A lot of people thought so, and given the comments from the gentleman before, I think that's a fair assumption to make. Most importantly, Michael Jordan himself thought so. That, many say, was the start of Jordan's strong, burning, undying dislike of Thomas, but it would only get worse in the future. Much worse, in fact. Right out of the gate, Jordan was pissed. The Chicago Tribune wrote a piece saying that he actually avoided and ignored Thomas when they were in an elevator together. That's how mad he was about the supposed slight in the All-Star game. Can you imagine being in an elevator with those two, feeling the intense tension between the two titans of the game? That must have been one a heck of an awkward situation. At the time, Thomas downplayed any mischievous behavior and told the press that he was actually trying to be friends, not enemies with MJ. He noted that his cousin Darren was a ball boy for the Bulls, and he greatly respected Jordan. Thomas even went on to say that his mother had invited Jordan over for dinner a couple of times, and he thought the two had a lot in common, and imagined them becoming good friends. But Thomas and Jordan would never become friends, and Jordan's dislike of the Piston superstar would only grow in the coming years. Well, that's half the story. Now we kind of know why MJ might not have liked Isaiah Thomas, maybe hated him. But Isaiah Thomas is the other side of that coin, and well, let's explore why he hated Michael Jordan. It involves a lot of pettiness, as most of this drama does. For much of his career, Jordan, like Thomas, had a pretty squeaky clean image. Sure, we all know there were plenty of rumors swirling around about him, but none of them were ever really proven. What we did know was that he was fiercely competitive and demanded a lot of himself and his teammates. He didn't make it easy on anyone, but most people actually admired that side of Jordan. They thought it proved that he had a warrior spirit. What so few people saw, however, was how vindictive and punishing Jordan could truly be. That's because he was very clever about it. He was smart in enacting his revenge. In the case of Isaiah Thomas, Jordan definitely earned himself the last laugh, but it didn't happen overnight. But that's okay, because he was willing to wait as long as it took to finally get what he wanted. After the dust-up between Jordan and Thomas during that All-Star game, Jordan and Thomas' feud simmered behind the scenes while so many other rivalries ruled the league. The next time they'd really meet up would be years later, and by that point, Jordan had already transformed from a promising young rookie to the biggest basketball player on the planet. In the 1988 playoffs, Jordan was an NBA star like no other. In that year alone, he scored an MVP, Defensive Player of the Year award, and an All-Star MVP. Everything that Jordan touched had turned to gold, and he had one goal in mind, a finals victory. And wouldn't you know it, guess who stood in his way to achieve that? Thomas and his Pistons. If you know the bad boy Pistons, then you wouldn't be surprised to hear that they aren't going to go away easy. The Pistons were known for roughing up everyone, no matter their success and status. They were a pretty physical team to say the least, and that led to a few people limping off the court after some games. Jordan was about to learn just how rough Thomas' crew could be. The thing about the Pistons at the time was that Thomas was clearly the leader and the most important player, but he wasn't the one who was usually doing all the dirty work. 
Once again, he was more of a shot caller, the guy instructing others to get nasty and punishing them in the paint. Many people have speculated that's what he did with Jordan. He posted a target on Michael Jordan's back, also known as the Jordan Rules, and the rest of the Pistons roster went wild. He was roughed up a lot during that series. In fact, tensions flared so much that Jordan actually threw a punch at Bill Lambeer after Lambeer shoved him in Game 3. Jordan was hoping to prove himself and his bulls in that series, but the Pistons were just too dominant, too big, and too tough to slow down. Detroit won that series 4-1, and it got under Jordan's skin even more. If you think he didn't like Thomas before that, imagine how he felt after that. Over the next few years, the Bulls and Pistons met again and again in heated battles in 89, 90, and 91, and it all culminated in a 1991 Eastern Conference Finals matchup when the Bulls took the Pistons down finally and were shocked to see Detroit walk off the court before the finals buzzer sounded. That was bad form for sure, but it also made Jordan dislike Thomas and his teammates even more. That was around the same time when Thomas' time in the postseason was coming to an end. He only played in the NBA for a few more seasons after that, and he only appeared in one more playoffs. As for Jordan, well, we all know what happened to him. He continued to dominate the league and would win six championships before retiring. So you might think that after Thomas' career kind of fizzled out just due to age, and Jordan started to rise the ranks and become arguably the greatest basketball player of all time, you'd think that'd like put their beef to an end, but it didn't. The beef was still fresh and cooking. There was a lot more of the beef to be explored and we'll go into that right now. I don't have to tell you how special the Dream Team was. The 1992 Olympics was a chance for the NBA superstars to fight hard on behalf of their country and play together for a gold medal. There had never really been anything quite like the Dream Team before. The roster included the heaviest hitters in the league. Of course, Michael Jordan was front and center and the team's biggest star, but around him were other stars like Patrick Ewing, Scottie Pippen, Clyde Drexler, Carl Malone, Magic Johnson, Charles Barkley, Larry Bird, and others. It was a who's who of the very best. But one person not in the lineup? Yup, Isaiah Thomas. Even though Thomas was still considered one of the greatest and smartest basketball players alive, he wasn't selected to play on the Dream Team. He didn't get a chance to represent his country and play with such luminaries of the league, and many people say it's because Jordan pulled the strings to make sure Thomas was left out. That might be a little conspiratorial, but uh, you never know. If you ask Jordan, he will say that he had nothing to do with Thomas's snub. In the critically acclaimed docuseries The Last Dance, Jordan swears that he had no part in Thomas not participating in the 92 Olympics. I respect Isaiah Thomas's talent. It, to me, the best point guard of all time is Magic Johnson, and right behind him is Isaiah Thomas. No matter how much I hate him, yeah, I respect his game. Now, it was insinuated that I was asking about him, but I never threw his name in there. But other people tell a different story that make that conspiracy sound a little bit more believable. According to the book Dream Team by Jack McCollum, Jordan made it very clear that if Thomas was playing, he wasn't. He allegedly told Rod Thorne, the man behind Team USA, I don't want to play if Isaiah Thomas is on the team. Well, that's pretty straightforward, isn't it? Jordan hasn't admitted to that, but he did say that when he asked Thorne about who was going to play on Team USA, Thorne responded by saying, the guy you're thinking about is not going to be playing. So did Jordan prohibit Thomas from playing in the 92 Olympics? Well, depending on who you ask, it sure looks that way. Maybe he didn't come straight out and say that Thomas couldn't play, but the powers that be knew full well that if Thomas was on the team, Jordan wouldn't be. So at the very least, they made the choice to bypass Thomas because they ultimately wanted the bigger star in Jordan. Magic Johnson said that it was Thomas's fault that he didn't get on the team. In his book, he said that Isaiah killed his own chances when it came to the Olympics. Nobody on that team wanted to play with him. And man, those are harsh words from Magic about Thomas, and it raises the question, who else didn't like Isaiah Thomas? Obviously, Jordan wasn't a fan of Thomas, but did other players on the Dream Team also dislike Thomas, like Magic didn't apparently? Well, it wouldn't be too surprising. During his years in the league, he ruffled a lot of feathers, beat a lot of opponents up, and always played with a team of rough athletes who didn't go easy on anybody. That was a low blow for Thomas, and he was still feeling the pain from his snub decades later. Being a part of the Dream Team was a huge honor for everyone involved, and it was more than an all-star game, more than a World Cup, it was the Olympics representing your country in the biggest game in the world. Years later, Thomas would say not being a part of the Dream Team was the biggest hole in his resume. 
With Thomas retired in the early 90s and Jordan still running the league, you'd think that the rivalry would be dead, the hatchet would be buried, and the past would be the past. Well, you'd be wrong. Thomas and Jordan continued to mix it up over the years. In one of the weirder twists in this story, Thomas was forced to openly talk about Jordan's greatness and place in NBA history. That's because Thomas's career after being a player was an NBA commentator, and he was one of those men on television alongside Bob Costas and others who was calling the NBA Finals on national TV when Jordan was finishing the Finals up in 96 for another victory. He had to swallow his pride and talk about the skillful show that Jordan had just given fans. He was professional throughout the whole thing, and he never once made it clear that he didn't see eye to eye with Jordan, but it was probably eating him up inside, honestly. Some years go by, both men get older, and the rivalry continued to live on as far as we know. It never really went away, even when both men had retired from the league. In 2009, Michael Jordan was inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame, and of course it was a well-earned honor, a no-brainer that everyone saw coming. But to the surprise of many, Jordan spent a lot of his acceptance speech taking aim at people who didn't believe in him and tried to stop him. He said that these people motivated him to play even harder and never give up. And that's why he thanked those naysayers and non-believers, including Thomas specifically. It was clear that that moment that Jordan still held a special cold place in his heart for Thomas. Some more time went on, years passed, and it seemed like this was really finally behind them. We knew that Jordan didn't like Thomas, but both men were living the good life, retired and away from the game for many years. But that didn't mean the rivalry wouldn't flare back up again. We all watched and loved The Last Dance when it was released in 2020, truly one of the best sports documentaries of all time, and we were all shocked to see just how genuine and honest Jordan was throughout the documentary. He was really authentic. The man did not hold back, especially when he was talking about his rivals, and sure enough, the series talked about Jordan's rivalry with Thomas and the Dream Team snub situation. Jordan said that nobody wanted to play with Thomas in 92 and that he didn't have anything to do with the Pistons guard missing the Olympics, like we said earlier. He also commented on Thomas and the Pistons walking off the court in the 91 playoffs. And Jordan finally revealed his thoughts about Thomas possibly icing him out of the 85 All-Star game. Jordan said that Thomas was absolutely behind Jordan getting limited time with the ball on the court. He said that once Thomas started to give Jordan the cold shoulder, everyone else followed in his footsteps. All in all, he didn't cast a very good light on Thomas. And Isaiah was downright pissed. Thomas was so upset, in fact, that he made his anger known in public. He said that he was watching the documentary with his family, thinking everything was good, and then Jordan came on screen and made him out to look like an asshole. Perhaps the most telling part of Thomas' statement about The Last Dance came at the ending, where he said, Until I get a public apology, this beef is going to go on for a long, long time. So, will Jordan ever forgive Thomas? Will these two players ever truly put this behind them and share a few laughs and a genuine handshake? Well, probably not, because it's become clear that Jordan doesn't just sorta kinda dislike Isaiah Thomas, he downright hates him. We were coming down, Michael Jordan was coming up. So, I mean, their hatred for each other, MJ and Thomas, seemed like it was pretty severe, but if you like that video that we just went through right now, you're gonna love this video about how Wilt and Kareem hated each other. It's arguably even more intense, so go check that out if you like watching videos about basketball players having beef.